Hello, I thought I'd just do a quick video about this gorgeous uh, piece of equipment that uh, I got maybe a year ago. I saw it at a fair and I just absolutely fell in love with it. It's an absolutely beautiful uh, bit of equipment. Uh, it's got this uh, keyboard that drops down, uh, so you clip it onto the front and makes it into a portable terminal, although just carrying it to the car uh, definitely uh, did me some exercise. Um, yeah, I love the design so much and I couldn't really work on it because I was between house moves that uh, I etched glass, um, you know, I etched uh, a matching coaster to go with it at the local hex base. Um, I assumed when I bought it, it would just be like a normal VT100 terminal. Uh, I didn't think it would be anything too exciting. But no, it's, it's led me on a whole journey of uh, discovery because everything, everything about this terminal is weird. Firstly, when I got it, it powered on. It has this weird squiggle on the 22, and the six in a box, you know, what, what does this mean? Um, the keyboard did nothing when I got it, although thankfully that was just a, a hot glued in connector had fallen off. I fixed that, I could actually type at that stage and I was actually happy that I bought something which at least somewhat functions. I also brought up the test menu and this is the bit where it started to confuse me because there is no setting for serial board rates or anything. There is for the printer but uh, that you can attach but not for any of the input, which I thought was very strange. Uh, it does have two 25 pin serial ports on the back. Uh, so this is actually an IBM 3270 compatible terminal. So it isn't just like a normal terminal where you just send it data and it displays it and it sends you back what the user's writing in the keyboard. Instead, it's more like a, a primitive uh, web page. Um, so the computer sends um, like a, like a, a form for the user to fill in. The user fills in the form and then you press enter and then the whole form gets sent back. Uh, so it meant that uh, like the mainframe was not uh, bothered by input, regular inputs. And so you could chain many more of these sort of terminals up. So I could not find that much information on the internet. Uh, although there is a lot, I could not find like the stuff which I needed. And so I took the whole thing apart. Uh, I pulled the chips out. Um, it seemed like it was based on the same reference design as the um, Tandy color computer. And so I got MAME out and I started making a emulator for, for this so that I could see, you know, if I send it some data, I can then step through it in a debugger and actually see what it will actually respond to. Uh, and that was a huge bunch of work uh, just to try and get anything. Um, the first thing I think was getting a question mark appearing there, which was very exciting. Um, but yeah, but I, I eventually got through and uh, in my emulator, I could at least get it to display something. So then we came to the real world. I'm very familiar with these ESP32 modules. And so I decided the best thing to, to do would be to make like a little board um, with an ESP32 on it and level shifting on, on the back. One thing to note is that I did use just uh, an eBay Max 3232, uh, which does a conversion between uh, your normal TTL or 3.3 volt levels to uh, the RS232 levels. And yeah, the cheap ones from eBay obviously counterfeit. Um, and yes, they did not work at all. I had some really weird um, signals on the oscilloscope when I probed it. Uh, but yes, but uh, the real chip worked a treat. And just to make it look a bit neater, also 3D printed a little case for it. Uh, reset buttons on the back. Let me get set up and I will show you it working. So here we are, let's uh, just turn on the power. And then it should boot up pretty quickly. Here we go. And uh, former 207 meets ESP32. So the first thing that I thought people that have seen this channel before probably know that I'm a bit of an Infocom text adventure nerd. And so 
I thought it'd be really nice to play uh, The Lurking Horror on it, because it's a game where you start in a room of a bunch of terminals. Um, and so I put that on there. I have actually played that all the way through already. And so now I've put on a few new games, Planet 4, Trinity and Sherlock. Uh, so let's load up Trinity. Um, so yeah, so you can do the usual things. Um, and, uh, and this runs just on the ESP32. Um, you can save and restore to its internal flash. It's got three games on it. Um, it will play pretty much all the Infocom adventures apart from the version 6 ones. Um, so I've really enjoyed playing games on this. Um, and yeah, I've, it has started me off to trying to collect a few more of these games. Um, so yeah, so I've been really enjoying it. Uh, I really love uh, us using this device. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll show you what else we could do with it. One thing is the ESP32 is obviously connected to the internet. So what could we do with that? Well, in fact, there's a IBM mainframe emulator called Hercules. And so there is a Telnet protocol to called TN3270. Uh, and so if I do this, it connects to my laptop running this emulator. There is a bit of a, a problem with this in that um, the emulator uh, expects a newer version of the terminal with uh, extended attributes, which it doesn't have. Um, so you have to go through a bit of a, a weird process. Ooh, and I have to remember, um, uh, to remember what the password is. One second. So Google skills let me down. Aha, here we go. This should be us into the system. We get like a little bit of wisdom. And yes, this is because we don't have the extended attributes. I'm pretty sure if we go into one of these, from now on, everything works completely fine. Uh, here we go. You've got um, all these files and you go backwards and forwards. Like I said, it's like a form that you fill in. So you go to here, put an E next to the file that you want to uh, edit. Press that, and you go into uh, that folder. Um, yeah, let's see if we can actually get in. So here we go, here's, here's a file. Uh, PF8 and PF7, you can scroll up and down. Um, so I thought that was pretty nifty. Um, I think maybe just trying to remember how to log off here. Next thing, uh, just press the reset button on the back. Well, if we can tell it into old mainframes, maybe we could tell it into um, current computers too. Yeah, so here we are in the SSH client. Um, so like this. And then remember to edit this bit out. And here we go, we're in, um, so how about I try, uh, yeah, so there's some of the source code for, for it and uh, you can check the uptime, um, but yeah, so there you go, and I should be able to log out of that. Exited. And then finally, uh, just for a bit of fun, uh, why not try uh, some Wikipedia? So here you go, it brings up uh, a page about the IBM uh, 3270. Um, let's search for pizza, just because. Uh, there you go, you can read about uh, everyone's favourite food, uh, or maybe if you like pasta more. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Hopefully that was uh, not too long a video. Um, I'm sure I missed out loads of stuff which I could have talked about. Um, but yeah, um, like this thing has taken a lot of work to get going, um, but I'm really pleased that uh, I actually got it up and running because I think it is a really cool uh, terminal. And yeah, if 
I was buying what I thought I was buying, I probably would have not been entertained uh, nearly as much. Um, so yeah, so that's my video about it. Everything that uh, you've seen here is on GitHub. So all the hardware, um, all the PCB files uh, for this, uh, like the whole thing. So if on the, you know, the, the very rare occurrence, you might have uh, an Informa uh, 207 or maybe some other IBM terminals. Uh, maybe this could be useful for you. So thank you for watching my video. I'll see you later.